So, so what we call today democratic, and we underline as Western, you know, you're giving too much credit to modern times. We've had it 1,500 years ago, and we've had it at the time of the prophet, and guess who came to the prophet to say, look, we're going to choose you as a head of state. Now, by the way, we'll be talking about the context a little bit more, because for those of you who don't know, the prophet started his message in Mecca, but then at one point was invited by the Medinans to go to Medina because he was having a rough time in Mecca. The idol worshippers were not happy with him. So he went to Medina, and there's a very nice story about when he, when he was coming into Medina. Who received him? Does anybody know? Who received the prophet? It was really very heartwarming. Guess who came to the prophet to say, look, we're going to choose you as a head of state. Now, by the way, we'll be talking about the context a little bit more, because for those of you who don't know, the prophet started his message in Mecca. But then at one point was invited by the Medinans to go to Medina because he was having a rough time in Mecca. The idol worshippers were not happy with him. So he went to Medina, and there's a very nice story about when he, when he was coming into Medina. Who received him? Does anybody know? Who received the prophet? It was really very heartwarming. Yes? Everyone is out. Yes. Well, basically, it's recorded that uh, there were young ladies or even uh, girls who were singing and then the prophet came and said, do you love me? And they said, yes. And he said, I, I love you as well. It was the girls and the children who were sing singing a beautiful song that if you, you know it, so maybe one day we can sing it together at the barbecue so that you remember. <laughs> the song is still with us till this day. Okay? Now, of course, in today's world, somebody going into a city and he's met by girls singing and he's a good, righteous, religious person, he'd say, your voice is aura, where are your guardians? Go in, get secluded, right? That did not happen in the time of the prophet. The women and the children sang to him and he was happy. He appreciated it. And then the goal of the women, they came to him and they said, we want to give you our vote, our allegiance our oath of allegiance and fealty. And so, did the prophet look at them and say, get out of here, women who made you think that you can vote? When did the women in America vote, Dean Davis? <coughs> different states at different times. It was 1920 before they had the right to vote national. And now we're talking 1,500 years ago? The women coming to the prophet and saying, you know, we, we're voting for you? And what does the prophet say? Well, wait, wait a second. Okay. But let's make sure we understand what's our relationship between the ruler or head of state and the people who are voting for him. Not only the agenda, there are some constitutional rights and issues. There are some moral standards. I'm not going to get the vote just so that I become the head of state. I have a message here, and it has a moral uh, backbone, and it has a political backbone. And are you, are you subscribing to my agenda? Not like today. The politician runs and finds what the agenda is of the people, and then he starts saying, I will do this for you, I'll do that for you. No, the prophet said, here's my agenda. Are you going to live by it? And they said, yes, and he accepted it. <coughs> so some people say, so why did the prophet uh, question the women? Well, there are reports that he questioned the men as well when they came to give him the vote of allegiance. No difference. But why is this important? This event was mentioned in the Quran. That the women came and voted for the Prophet. And I remember I was visiting a Muslim country which had not given women the vote at that time. And I was talking to one of the Islamist leaders. <coughs> and I said, uh, What's your problem? Why aren't you giving women the vote? He said, well, you know, uh, Islamically, I said, wait a minute. Have you seen this verse in the Quran? He said, well, yeah, you're right. I mean, Islam, yeah, OK, so they can vote Islam. But culturally, we're not like that. I said, fine, that I understand. But please, when you get on television, 
don't say it's Islam that prohibits the women from voting, because that's not true. And he agreed with me, it's not true. So if you don't know what Islam guarantees you and what doesn't, you're going to be terribly confused. <coughs> but from the very outset, Muslim women were treated as part of the public square. These were women in the public square. <coughs> the Prophet didn't tell them, go home. He had a conversation with them. Okay? And here's, so, so, so the fact that the verse came mentioning the women is very significant, unfortunately, for today's uh, discussion of Muslim women's rights. So when I'm asked what I would like to see, I would say I'd like to see Islam practiced the same it was practiced during the life of the Prophet. Then we'd be way ahead of where we are now. Okay? Uh, and that's more, uh, uh, that's more of, uh, of the verses on bay'ah, okay? On the issue of bay'ah, which is uh, the vote uh, issue. And notice that voting in Islam, <coughs> and not just voting, if I were teaching you contract law, I'd probably mention it when I talk about Islamic contract law later, the marriage contract. Every promise you make, Every oath you take, because this is an oath, right, of fealty, <coughs> it has two parties to it, you and the other person, but also you have a witness, you have made that, taken that oath or that promise before God. So if you violate your oath, there is the civil human level on which you might be dragged into court for violating your promise, but there is also in the afterlife the fact that you made an oath uh, and God is, you see it says here, who violates the oath does so to the harm of his own soul. So God will be questioning you if you make a promise and you take it to life. So, so it's even more entrenched notion of how you choose who rules you in a country, how you go about making promises, because this is not only a, a something you do with the other people, it's something that God is witnessing as well. So you might as well take it seriously. And there is another uh, occurrence about the and the bayan in the Quran. This is where uh, some of the believers went under a tree and gave uh, their oath to the Prophet. And by the way, in this instance too, uh, the commentary tells us there were women among them. So women have been part and parcel of the political process in Islam for a long, long time. Don't let people tell you otherwise. Now, I would like to move to another aspect of Islamic relationship between the head of state and the people. And in this verse, it's a very moving verse. I cannot read it, but not be moved, at least in the Arabic uh, uh, <coughs> text of the Quran, because it's directed to the Prophet. It is ordering the Prophet to engage in consultation. It says it's part of the mercy of God that you deal gently with them. Were you severe or harsh-hearted, they would have broken away from you. So pass over their faults lightly and ask for God's forgiveness for them and consult them in the affairs of the moment. And, and, and so on. God loves those who put their trust in him. So even the prophet is ordered to take counsel from the people. He does not come riding on his white horse and say, I am the prophet, obey me. That's not at all the image of the prophet Muhammad Rather, he was a humble person. He was a friendly person. He would sit down and talk to the people around him, and he would say, in matters of religion, I'm the final arbiter. In other matters, he takes consultation. And in several occasions, he took consultation about what to do in certain ways and ended up it didn't work out. He did not call his advisors back and say, I told you, you, know, you shouldn't have done that. I told you you should done, do something else. I know better. He never did that. Once he took the consultation, whether it failed or succeeded, he didn't come back to rub it in and say, you failed, for example. 